today I'm going to do a video on how to make up a rod bucket. Uh, the next couple of weeks I'm going to do some, some short videos on simple helper duties, like basic helper duties. First one being how to make up a rod bucket. A couple of things to remember is every welder is different and every job is different. If, if you're on big pipe, you're gonna bring certain things to a weld in your rod bucket and if you're on you know a smaller pipe or uh, whatever you're gonna bring different tools in your rod bucket not different but uh, you may bring more or less tools on, on different jobs you know you got fabrication jobs you're gonna have more tools to bring to your weld you know we're just gonna do the basic thing on how to make up a rod bucket in this video so one of the things that, that's real simple that that needs to be known about my up a rod bucket is learning your sizes of welding rods get to know them so well that you can just grab a rod and feel that it's a 1 8 or feel that it's a 5 you know and uh, so things like that's gonna help but anyway let's get started all right so <clears throat> one of the first things you might do is obviously ask your welder where the rod bucket is if it's not obvious don't be afraid to ask any question at all you know ask you know where is your welding rod where is your you know files all the stuff I'm fixing to show you right now I'm gonna gather everything up and be right back all right so I've gathered everything up here uh, keep in mind this is just an example of some things some basic things you're gonna want in a rod bucket uh, especially we can use this job for instance we're on 42 inch 740 wall so Definitely going to need more than this many 3 16 welding rods. It's going to take uh, just way more than this, but I just wanted to give you guys an example. Uh, first things first, get to know your welding rod sizes. And if you noticed, I put the bare ends down. That way, in case the bottom of this rod bucket is wet, or if you're down on a bell hole, or you're just in a muddy area and you set your bucket down, and there's holes in your bucket if your rods get wet it'll only be on this bare end where it won't affect where you where the welder strikes up at so normally like to carry a little bit of everything but again it depends on your welder and the size of pipe you're on but 1 8 60 10 532 60 10 532 80 10 and 3 16 80 10 uh, another quick quick thing to remember they have it'll say on the box and uh but they have 3 16 welding rod and they have five millimeter that is obviously just standard and metric sizes but five millimeter is very similar to 3 16 in diameter so if you're ever looking for if a welder says five millimeter he's talking about a 3 16 and the 532 is also known as four millimeter. So, just a helpful tip. So your welding rod, you want to bring plenty of welding rod, and keep in mind your bead rod, your first pass you put in, you're not going to be, you're not going to need near as much of it as you will your three sixteenths. So, just something to keep in mind. The more, the more you're out there doing it, the more you're, you're on a weld like the same size of pipe and that weld, that same thickness of pipe, you will get. A general idea of how many how much welding rod you need so that just takes experience and being on the job and a patient welder but hopefully this video will help uh, those of you that haven't helped at all and uh, have a little heads up before you head out on a job so the <clears throat> next couple of things is a wire wheel and a sanding pad and a grinding disc the reason I left the grinding disc out is because chances are you're going to have a grinding disc or wire wheel on your grinder. So that won't need to be in your bucket. But make sure you have plenty of, uh, like if you're, say your grinding disc is wore down on your grinder, just part of that thinking ahead that I was talking about. If, it, if it's wore down, you know you're going to go through it on this next weld, throw an extra grinding disc in your bucket something to keep in mind but Santa pad wire wheel and a grinder disc are the three main things that you want to carry you'll also want to carry a three or four pound hammer 
your rod bucket and then a couple of spacing tools some guys call them spacing tools some of them call them wedges some of us call them tools so just get to know your welder and you know you'll know the uh, terminology whenever you work with him and like I said don't be afraid to ask questions you know if you don't understand what he's saying just ask him. communication communicate communicate and uh, another thing that's real common to carry in a rod bucket is a file uh, you'll use this file to I mean several things to uh, touch up a landing on the pipe which we can talk more about in uh, future videos or run on the inside of the pipe just uh, kind of touch up whenever you're prepping up uh, pipe ends but also you can use it to chop these this might be illegal in safety's eyes some jobs are on they may not want you to do this but on these brand new discs sometimes they're hard to get going they don't cut as good they're kind of square but if you take this and chop them it makes it it won't bounce as bad once you first take off so it's another thing you use a file for and use it to knock bb's off before you go to cap or anything like that but a file is super handy to have and i normally put it with the sharp end down also just so you don't kneel down and uh get poked get prodded with that file so a striker is another thing a helper needs to carry in case uh well for the for the weed burner or the torch to light it the propane torch or in case you're making a cut you need a striker to uh light up the torch a temp stick is another thing to carry as a helper on this job they require it to be i believe it's 300 degrees just a 300 degree temp stick but you want to preheat the pipe and keep it above a certain temperature and they give you temp sticks to mark on the pipe whenever it melts that means it's hot enough so and then a paint pen to write the stencil of who welded it your stencil is like an initial um, every welder gets a a what they call a stencil whenever you test in they give you a stencil and that's the helper's job to write the stencil on the pipe you know who welded what side of the pipe or if it's, if it's smaller pipe you just obviously write just the stencil one person welded all of it so but we can talk more about stencils later on but a paint pen is what another thing a helper needs to carry most pipeline jobs you go on the contractor will supply all of this stuff right here not every job but a lot of jobs here uh, with the 798 they do supply all this but if you're working non-union uh, they may not supply a rod bucket and a uh, hammer and things like that but even on a non-union job they're gonna supply welding rods usually files paint pins strikers grinder discs they're gonna supply all your consumables so there y'all have it there is a very short rundown on what to have in a rod bucket for those of you that are new to the uh, pipeline world or haven't been on a pipeline job that is what some simple things to carry in a uh, rod bucket so if you guys have any more questions feel free to ask in the comments i will do my best to answer them uh, within the first day or two after this video is posted and uh looking forward to next week i think next week i'm going to do what all what things to bring to the weld one of them including the rod bucket but there's things ladder mud board splatter pads things like that so be looking forward to that next week and uh just gonna do a little uh basic helper duties series here so thank you guys for watching we will see you guys next friday go check out arosswelding.com if you guys have not already subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and we'll see you guys next friday I already said that but remember learn something every day